I'm Karen Donahue, and thank you to Professor Intralligator for inviting me to speak. I'm a Tufts Computer Science alum, and I've also taught in the CS department. I'm an MIT Media Lab alum, and I run my own user experience design practice. I design and release my own mobile products, and I've had a long career in technology. I've also published a book on user experience. What is user experience? It's really about designing products in a way that puts users' needs front and center. And if you're a user experience practitioner, you'll be designing new products or improving existing products. I design products for clients, and I also design, ship, and build my own products. And I find that really interesting as a practice. I started my career as a software engineer in pen-based computing, worked on the shipping of a really, really interesting, innovative product called Freestyle that won a lot of awards and it was cited as a really innovative uh, new kind of user experience. And from there, went on to design several mobile device platforms. On the left is the Savage OS, which was completely Java-based, and on the right is the Razer 2 from Motorola, which was a Linux-based platform. I also worked on the design of the provisioning application for the Mislu keyboard C24. It's a two-octave wireless music keyboard for iPad, and I worked with engineering to design the iPad app for provisioning the keyboard and for configuring the wireless controllers to control core MIDI apps. I've also worked on robotics, so a robot to allow for the neurorehabilitation therapy for stroke patients. And also for VMware, I led the user experience design for the Switch platform, which was really interesting. It ran two instances of the Android operating system on one device, and with only one tap, an employee could switch between their work phone and their personal phone. And if you think about it, there are some really interesting use cases. So, for example, if you're on your work phone, do you allow an incoming call from your personal phone? So you can see some of the user experience design challenges that are faced in designing these kinds of platforms. What I think is really interesting and exciting is there's all kinds of form factors to design for. So you can design for phones or phablets or robots, and there will be all kinds of other form factors coming. I have found it really interesting to constantly have to keep up with the evolution of devices and the design of UI for these devices because the interaction models are constantly changing because the device interactions are changing, the form factors are changing, the software platforms are changing. And uh, on the left, when you look at, say, the Savage platform, I had to really worry about things like battery life and whether or not the components would work harmoniously together in its user experience. On the right is an example of an app that I'm currently working on for air quality monitoring and it's a touch experience on an iPhone and the interaction model is very, very different. When I think about interaction design, I often have to, th for mobile device, I have to think about is it a one-handed or a two-handed experience? If it's a one-handed experience, and you are holding the phone in your right hand, then you really only have this kind of fan area where the user's thumb is naturally going to fall during interaction. And you have to really think about what are the interactions you want the user to do to be successful, and is that a natural interaction given the limitations of the human hand. I've also worked on other connected devices. This is the uh, Kodak EasyShare frame, wireless picture frame, done using the frame channel platform. And interaction design for this was very interesting because it was a device in the home uh, being used at a distance of about 8 to 12 feet. So you could imagine that there are some really interesting challenges in terms of legibility and interaction there. And then some of the work that I've done in gesture since my work at the Media Lab has been in uh, customizing content in a really easy-to-use iOS experience. And I have found that it was very challenging to design for this kind of experience because you really have to think about how does the user interact with the content and create that custom experience. And also, this was my first experience as a product manager for my own product, and there were really interesting uh, challenges in mapping the gesture design to specific content types. And also, just users were asking for all different kinds of content 
I got emails from, you know, eight-year-old boys asking for uh, skulls or other things that were not what I had originally intended to ship. And also designing and deploying on a fast-evolving platform like iOS, uh, you really have to keep up with the components and understand how to get the best experience for your users in what you design. I've been working most recently on an air quality application uh, that crowdsources air quality sensors all over the world. There are about 25,000 devices currently being monitored. And what we're working on is acquiring the data and then rating it for accuracy. Very technically challenging because the data is coming in from low-cost sensors all over the world and, and some government sensors and figuring out the heuristics to determine what does it mean for data to be accurate. What does it mean to uh, have confidence in the data? There's lots of interesting end user expectations that you have to manage because when you have thousands of uh, users that are using your product, you get a lot of feedback and so you have to be able to prioritize that and understand how you're going to use that in what you're planning in your roadmap. And interaction wise, it's, it utilizes a lot of gesture for map, navigating maps and being able to look at data and drill down into details of data, but at the same time you're getting constant pressure to add more data to these screens and I'm trying to create a really clean, easy to use experience. So it's, uh, it, it's a really challenge to, to balance those interests. What is user experience in the real world? It's really about balance. So balancing between interests of the business, of your end users, and the technology. And as a user experience practitioner, you're going to work in the intersection of these areas. There are lots of different product disciplines in the practice of product. So there's user experience practice professionals, there's product managers, there's engineering, and that includes operations and engineering. In my experience as a designer at Motorola, there were many, many different practitioners across all the disciplines and products. So product management, marketing, software engineering, and there are lots and lots of areas to work in, and uh, you can move between them in some cases. In the UX practice, there's many different sort of segments. I work primarily in interaction design, product planning, but there are practitioners who focus on visual design, on motion design, and increasingly new areas like growth. I find product management to be really a uh, fast-changing discipline Really, product managers are responsible for gathering and understanding requirements and also being able to understand the who, what, and why of a product and communicate that vision to the design and engineering teams and, and really get products shipped. They uh, also prioritize features and they have to do a lot of tactical work to get those products designed and shipped into the market in a way that creates value. I find that the PM discipline is really kind of changing and it's also different based on orgs. So some orgs have more design focused product, others have more engineering focus. So it really depends on the org. Engineering also has different uh, segmentation. So you'll see people who focus on front end development, back end development, hardware, quality, and uh, also you know development ops and design ops. So it's really about balance, as I said, and the balance is between product management, user experience, and engineering, and UX is really in the intersection of those areas. My career path has gone from being a software engineer through to uh, a UX practitioner and an entrepreneur. Your pathway may be different or you may have similar uh, kind of experience. And now I really work on helping clients to understand how to apply user-centered design to their product development cycles and I work on you know all kinds of new products sometimes I'm, I'm asked to uh, audit products that are failing in the market or having issues but you know it's really a, a variation of new products or looking at existing products and trying to improve them. The future of user experience I think is going to involve managing the ethical concerns that are going to arise, that UX researchers and designers are going to face, including things like privacy, and also understanding the relationship of UX, product management, engineering. I think that's constantly sort of shifting and changing. There's blurring lines 
I see between the disciplines of PM and UX and uh, somewhat engineering, but you know, I think these will impact practitioners' roles and responsibilities going forward. And I also think, uh, especially now, remote collaboration with teams and users is really critical. Thank you so much. I was really happy to give this talk and I'll take any questions.